All right, an important part of thermal properties is thermal stresses. You'd be shocked to know just how many materials break, not due to an applied mechanical stress, but a, um, an evolved mechanical stress that came about due to uh, a change in temperature. So we call these thermal stresses, right? Now, where do these come from, right? So typically when you have restrained components, right, so the materials are glued together or bolted together or something, and then there's a difference in thermal expansion between the two different materials, that creates a thermal stress. Let's do an example real quick. Imagine a material right here that's a metal, and it's epoxied to, or bonded or welded or whatever, clamped to a ceramic, right? So this is our ceramic, and this one right here is our metal. Well, it's fine when you clamp them together at the first moment, but what happens when you heat this thing up? What do we know about metals versus ceramics and how they like to expand, right? So the metal, upon heating, would like to get much longer, right? Let's say I'm dramatically you know, drawing this, but it might want to do this. Whereas a ceramic only wants to increase its length you know, a little bit. So that's what they would like to be upon heating, but they can't. They're bonded together. So what is actually going to happen is the following. You're going to get, again, this is what it would like to be. But what it's actually going to be is the following. The metal won't be able to expand as much as it would like. And the ceramic is going to be forced to expand more than it would like. So that's going to put different stress states in these materials. It's going to create tension in the ceramic. And it's going to create compression in the, the metal. Does this conceptually make sense, I think? Um, so we can actually calculate this, right? The stress that will be generated right, either compression or tension, the stress is going to be equal to the modulus of your material times the strain. The strain is going to be equal to your change in length, so delta L over L, and we already learned earlier that delta L over L, we could write that in terms of thermal expansion. That's going to be equal to our linear coefficient of thermal expansion multiplied by the change in temperature, right? So, uh, Notice that's T naught minus T final, right? So depending on the modulus of your material, it's not like these will have equal stress in them because um, one could be more compliant and one could be more stiff, right? If they had the same compliance and stiff, then they would have equal but opposite stress in them. But you're going to have different modulus values. In any case, you're going to end up with compression and tension in your material. So this is going to be especially bad for a ceramic because what do we know about ceramics under tension is that they're really weak. So if you take a ceramic and you bond it to a metal or a polymer, even worse, and this thing wants to expand and it's being and the, the polymer wants to expand more, the ceramic is being forced to expand more than it wants to, it's very likely that you're going to get to satisfy that tension, you're going to get cracks forming in your material, right? And they can actually cause failure. It can cause a delamination. These things could delaminate right? Or they could break your material. Both of those things can happen, um, okay? When something breaks due to a difference in temperature, uh, thermal stress is generated into it, we call that thermal shock, right? And you've probably seen this before. If you've ever been cooking with like a hot pan and you put it in cold water in the sink and or a hot glass and it, it shattered, it broke, that was thermal expansion. So why did it break? Well, let's think about it, okay? When we think about thermal shock for a minute. So we've got cold water, right? Right, so you've got cold water down here. Now you take a hot ceramic and you put it in there, right? This up here is some temperature T hot, but down here you've got temperature T cold. So if we zoom in on the end of the bar that's in the water, right? So let's zoom in on this. What we have is a material that's expanded because it's hot, right? Going this way but it's going to transition into a ceramic that is not expanded because it's at the T-cold region, right? And this, this strain that's happening right here, right? You see that the strain that has to occur there? Um, ceramics just won't tolerate strain. Ceramics don't tolerate strain, so instead, it's just going to fracture. You get fracture happening. It's going to break your material, right? So that's thermal shock, and you can see lots of fun videos on YouTube where they do that, right? So this is especially pronounced in brittle materials because... Brittles can't just deform, right? Uh, brittle materials instead would rather break than deform, right? So this isn't as big of a deal for metals and polymers because they can just deform, but ceramics, it's a big deal. We can calculate a material's thermal shock resistance, TSR, it's thermal shock resistance, 
with this equation. So TSR, thermal shock resistance, is going to be equal to the strength of your material, the failure strength, right? So the stronger your material, the more shock resistant it'll be. Makes sense? The higher your thermal conductivity your material is, the better it'll be. Why is that? We'll show, talk about it in a minute. The lower your modulus, the better it'll be. And the um, lower your coefficient of thermal expansion, the better it'll be. So why? Well, let's think about these. In this scenario, let's talk about thermal expansion first. This thing shrunk, and it will shrink in response to thermal expansion. So if you have a really low thermal expansion material, it'll shrink, but it won't shrink that very much, right? And if there's less shrink there, then there's less strain produced. So that's why you want a low thermal coefficient of thermal expansion. Modulus is the same. If you have a low modulus, then even though there's a um, stress uh, strain, it's going to produce a, a small stress. If there's low modulus, then you get low stress from the from a given strain. And then thermal conductivity. It, the higher the thermal conductivity, the the more. Um, remember, if thermal conductivity is high, then if this is temperature cold down here and this is temperature hot up here, then the difference in temperature between these two. The delta T will be really slow, will be small because you're going to allow heat to flow really quickly into there, or temperature, cold temperature, right? The cold it's going to be it's going to be more uniform. The higher thermal conductivity something is, so these materials you could plug them in and you could figure out what's going to have a good thermal shock resistance versus a low. Here's a good example: soda lime glass, like a, like a drinking glass, might be made of this. Its thermal expansion coefficient is nine parts per million per kelvin, but Pyrex, which was specifically designed to be a material that doesn't break as easy when you cook with it, it's, cook, it's a really expensive cookware because it doesn't break as often, it has three times lower thermal expansion coefficient, so it makes it much less likely to fail during cooking.